scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. And we worship. We worship. We bless you. Bless him in the spirit for the mighty things that he will be doing tonight. Father, we honor you. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we honor you. Father, we give you the praise. Hallelujah. Father, my portion tonight, let it be delivered unto me. Lift your voice and pray. My portion tonight. God is a God of portions my portion tonight i receive by faith my portion tonight he baratos calibrante que baratos que di balahasia my portion tonight i receive by faith I receive my portion in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Hallelujah. Father, visit us tonight in the name of Jesus. You call this a miracle service, let it answer to its name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If your name is Stephen and we say Stephen and you don't answer, it tells us something is wrong with you. The Bible says, whatsoever Adam called it, that was the name thereof. So if God says it's your season of lifting and you call it by faith, it should answer. If God says this is your season of open doors, the same way if I call you and I say come, you come. Even the dead came. When he said Lazarus, he came forth let me speak to you in the name of jesus that everything that must come into your life tonight there is no power in existence that will stop it from coming in the name of jesus christ i believe in the gospel of power i truly believe in the power of the holy spirit christianity is just a discussion of fables without the power of the holy spirit the difference is the power of God. Hallelujah. We need the power of God, especially over the issues that plague men in today's world. Enough of discussions. We need the power of God to heal, to deliver, to change lives. We need the power of God. We need the power of God. We will keep giving vain explanations until the power of God is introduced. Pray one prayer. Father, let your power be revealed in and through my life tonight. Please be serious. Pray. Whether you are outside, you are following online, let your power be revealed in my life. 
you are a man of God pray an encounter with power tonight let your power be revealed in and through my life you came here in need of a touch from God there's no distance in the spirit connecting from your home connecting online connecting by way of television let your power be revealed in my life in the name of Jesus Christ For someone tonight, God will surpass your expectations. In the name of Jesus. Let your faith rise tonight. You have come to the God of heaven. And he will not disappoint you. In Jesus' name I pray. Please be seated gloriously in God's presence. It's always a joy to have us around. And for all who are worshipping with us for the first time, across the nations and in this place i welcome you in the name of jesus Amen. sit back with joy and watch the wonder walking power of jesus the wonder walking power of jesus his power to save his power to heal his power to deliver this god we serve is a mighty god please convince yourself that you are not hearing a lie this god we serve is a mighty god it does not take him too long overnight like it is tonight god can turn someone's story completely in the name of jesus christ this is not a preacher's gibberish believe me when i tell you this god can come to you i know we are many but don't forget that when he deals with us he can come to you many people have phone lines but when they call you everybody's phone does not ring it is yours that rings in spite of the fact that there are many phone lines when i dial your number it does not call another number in the name of jesus christ now i'll give a very short charge and then i'll begin to pray the charge will help us to receive maximally there are many believers who need to be taught how to receive you see if you're not taught how to receive god can be in a place mighty things can be happening and yet you may not receive it is very important that we open up ourselves to scripture and understand how god operates one scripture and then we'll begin to pray by the way let me start by saying this while i prayed and prepared for this meeting even before today god is going to be visiting us across several areas but there are four major areas that came to me by revelation and god told me these are the core areas he's going to be dealing with tonight number one restoration of spiritual fire this the lord told me there are people who will come in need of restoration number two healing i know we're going to be ministering deliverance but tonight god wants to heal he truly heals the area of healing number three is the area of stagnation this came to me by revelation stagnation means that something pegs you at a level and you do not make progress consistent with the investment of your efforts and then number four god tonight wants to break by prophecy financial limitations so there are many things that God would do, but I'm announcing this to you as it came to me by revelation so that we'll connect by faith. Are we still together? First Corinthians chapter one, we'll start our reading from verse 18. Paul is teaching the church in Corinth and he gives an instruction that we need to learn. He says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Please pay attention. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Next verse. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? 
where is the disputer of this world hath not god made foolish the wisdom of the world it's a question 21 for after that in the wisdom of god the world by wisdom knew not god it pleased god by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe 22 for the jews require a sign and the greeks seek after wisdom but we preach christ crucified unto the jews a stumbling block and to the greeks foolishness uh-huh but unto them that are called both jews and greeks christ is the power of god and the wisdom of god take note of 24 we're coming there because the foolishness of god is wiser than men and the weakness of god is stronger than men go to verse 24 please it says but unto them who are called both jews and greeks christ is the power of god and christ is the wisdom of god please pay attention the word christ comes from the word christos it means the anointed one which is jesus christ principally but it also means the anointing the anointed one revealing himself together with his anointing that is the word christ so principally is a name for jesus but it also extends to all who are anointed with the spirit are we together remember the bible says the kingdoms of this world revelations eleven fifteen, are become the kingdoms of our god and of we his christ and he shall reign forever are we together so back to first corinthians 1 and verse 24 it was a revelation god gave me that will guide our receiving tonight the bible says when the anointing of god Christ and his anointing is revealed in the midst of his people. It operates in two dimensions. Number one, there are people who the anointing will be revealed to as the power of God. But there are others the anointing will be revealed to as the wisdom of God. That both dimensions of revelation is still Christ. Are we together? There are problems that people have in their life that require the power of God head on. For instance, attacks of darkness. For instance, situations that need to be corrected supernaturally. For such, you don't need any counseling. You do not need any discussion. There has to be an encounter with the supernatural power of God. But there are other situations that require the wisdom of God not just the power of God the Bible says when Christ is revealed he is revealed in the midst of his people as the power of God but also as the wisdom of God so there are people you came here tonight and what you need is the anointing but revealed as the wisdom of God God begins to give you insight as to what you need to do to provide answers to the needs that you have. Many issues in our lives, I wrote here, require the power of God. Many issues. They require the power of God to supernaturally correct unfavorable conditions. Health conditions, for instance, demonic conditions for instance would always require the power of god to supernaturally correct those conditions the bible is full of conditions that were changed supernaturally by the power of god but there are many other situations that require the wisdom of god that means you must understand the principles of the kingdom are located for that result you desire this is very important if you do not understand this it may be difficult to receive maximally 
that means in a meeting like this you can find people falling under the anointing you can find people receiving things a divine touch from god and usually people stand up and wonder what now happened to me why did i fall for instance why is my body shaking why is this supernatural experience happening and many people return back and cannot discern what just happened the bible says when the anointing when christ is revealed he comes to some as the power of god but he comes to some as the wisdom of god there are people as you fall under that anointing you don't have to fall but i'm saying for instance if that happens to you you can stand up and what happened to you was the light of god the solution to your problem just came to you just because you fell does not mean it's a demon going out you can stand up from that experience and supernatural insight as to what to do christ as the wisdom of god christ as the power of god many times when we come for meetings like this People just focus on the charismatic dimensions of the dealings of God and people fall, they rise, they cry, they shout and they return back and do not know what to do with these experiences. Paul is giving us an explanation right now that every time you see the anointing, the Holy Spirit and his anointing moving in the midst of his people, Christ is being revealed to some the power of of God to correct unfavorable conditions but to some he's bringing you impartation of grace and knowledge for instance we're dealing with issues here of financial limitation you can see that um, there are people for instance who it is just a demonic thing no matter what they do they cannot rise they cannot experience that dimension of the glory of God for such people you need the anointing to come as the power that breaks that yoke are you seeing now but there are many people who have been they do not have the wisdom to make correct financial decisions the anointing will still come to them but it will now come as the wisdom of god you will hear something through the word while we are ministering you will hear something all of us are not hearing and that becomes the grace you will go back from this miracle service for instance with a grace to now begin to walk in keeping with the principles that make for increase the anointing still came to you because most people don't know what to do with the anointing and so when we receive when we shout amen receive the anointing receive grace amen some fall some cry some shout some roll and you know all kinds of things happen to people and at the end of it we stand up we dust ourselves we share the grace and we go back and sadly many do not finish up that process to receive the testimony desired first corinthians 1 24 let's look at that scripture again but to them which are called say i am called one more time say i am called how do you know you are called acts chapter 2 from verse 39 i believe acts chapter 2 for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the lord our god shall call we didn't just come we were called so i know that i am called and the bible says those who he called he for knew he predestined god called me called me to reveal his glory called me to reveal his grace and the bible says when that anointing comes upon the called it is christ revealed as the power of god christ revealed as the wisdom of god is someone learning so that when we begin to pray your heart is expectant and it does not mean he has to reveal himself as the power or the wisdom he can reveal himself as both that should be your prayer that Lord you come to me as your wisdom and your power wisdom to rise and to reign wisdom to rule let me show you something about the power and the excellency of wisdom proverbs chapter 8 let's start from verse 1 very quickly so we can begin to pray doth not wisdom cry 
and understanding put forth her voice verse 2 she standed in the top of the high places by the way in the places of the paths she cried at the gate wisdom now at the entry of the city this is already a revelation wisdom has gone to the city before you and she's crying from the city and coming in at all the doors verse 4 unto you O men i call and my voice is to the sons of man oh ye simple simple there means void of understanding understand wisdom O ye fools be ye of an understanding heart here for i will speak of excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right thing wisdom now is speaking my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination unto my lips it says all the words of my mouth are in righteousness there is nothing forward or perverse in them verse 9 they are all in plain to him that understandeth, and write to them that findeth knowledge receive my instruction and not silver do you know what this is saying wisdom is saying if they keep me here and they keep silver make no mistake to choose silver when you choose me you have chosen more than silver look at the power of wisdom and knowledge rather than choice gold for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared with her you have to pause here and think of all the things you desire i desire a house i desire a car i desire to move from a tenant to a landlord and wisdom is saying these things are mundane compared to the power you have when you have me that means for the many prayer requests you have written 10 15 8 9 of them wisdom is saying if you choose me all of those things will no longer become requests 12 we we'll find somewhere to stop i wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions 13 it says the fear of the lord is to hate evil pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do i hate 14 counsel is mine and sound wisdom i am understanding i have strength so wisdom is not weak by me now wisdom is speaking kings here does not just mean the male royalty that means if it is true that the bible has made you royalty that were a kingdom of priests he's saying if you want to reign in life you will need me and by me princes decree justice 16 it says by me princes rule and nobles even all the judges of the earth i love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me riches and honor this is what i'm looking for riches and honor are with me so when you want to withdraw your money you go to an atm you don't need the atm really but because the atm contains something that you need is that true you go to the atm and slot in a card type whatever you need to type and it brings out cash physical cash you hold it there so he's saying riches and honor are with me the same way money is inside an atm wisdom is saying when you come there is riches and honor you know what honor is honor means to be perceived to match your true worth when you are honored it means that men give you the credit and the perception that truly matches your worth your sacrifice and even surpasses it in many respects it is possible to be a noble person and yet not have honor on your life and you will be perceived far below your true worth are we together yes when god brings you honor he lifts you to match your sacrifice he lifts you to match your knowledge he lifts you to match your level of spiritual investment and will even surpass it for you he says riches and honor are with me yea lasting riches that come with righteousness let 19 be the last verse 
it says my fruit is better than gold than fine gold and my revenue the salary that i pay you is more than choice silver say wisdom christ revealed as the wisdom of god my dear people listen to me when the wisdom of god truly lands upon your life right from where you are you will begin to rise in a way that will first surprise you before it surprises everybody around you the assignment of wisdom is to dress you with the robe of royalty there is something called the grave clothes i hope you know that let me show you john 11 44 43 and 44 let's look at it john chapter 11 this was lazarus when jesus called lazarus to come forth out of the grave the bible says when he had thus spoken he cried out with a loud voice lazarus come forth look at verse 44 the bible says and he that was dead came forth read the remaining part with me bound hand and foot with grave clothes hold on it would have just said with clothes there are clothes that belong to the grave there are clothes that belong to failure situations have their garments that you can wear upon you you can dress in a way that you don't have to tell me you're a military man i know you're a military man you can dress in a way that i know you are a lawyer you can dress in a way that i know you are an engineer you can dress in a way every profession has clothes the bible says even the grave has clothes grave clothes failure has garments do you not believe this that he can give them beauty for ashes is that true the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified the assignment of wisdom is to come to you like Haggai, the keeper of the king's virgins in the book of esther and wisdom will begin to dress you you came from a background with grave clothes failure clothes delay clothes that means i don't need to ask what your situation is i just need to look at what you are wearing you can wear honor like a garment you can wear shame like a garment you can wear delay like a garment you can wear poverty like a garment believe me i'm not just motivating you it is true i can look at your life and i see a display of the honor the beauty the order of god and i can look at your life and i see that everything there is just ashes you are wearing certain clothes let me tell you the assignment of wisdom when the anointing of the spirit comes it took power to bring Lazarus out of the grave. But he told the man, he said, walk to him, lose him, give us 44. The Bible says, Jesus said to them, my power has been displayed now in his coming out of the grave. But if you leave him that way, he is out of the grave, but he's still in trouble because his hands and his feet were tied and a garment was on him he said lose him walk to him use order and principles to walk to him lose him and let him go the power of god can bring you healing the power of god can bring you deliverance but it takes the wisdom of god to lose you from that shackle of shame financial shame whatever there is something you must know leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 please give it to us you want to see the manifestation of the power and the glory of god read with me koinonia ready one to read and moses said uh-huh this is the thing which the lord commanded that ye should do and the glory of the lord shall appear unto you there is what you must know there is what you must do and then you will see the glory of God financially you will see the glory of God in every area of your life when a rich man came to Jesus he asked a question he said good master what must I do that's a responsible man speaking I know that I will, it, something will be required of me 
And Jesus told him, no, no, no. When it has to do with the matters of salvation, it's not just about doing things. Good master, what is my own commitment? What do I need to learn? What do I need to know? What do I need to do to be saved? While we are praying, you must pray and cry to the God of heaven to show you what you need to do. For some of you, while the word of God is coming with fire, the spirit of God will speak to you. I told you last year, go and register that company. You've been sitting in fear. Your destiny helper has been waiting in prophecy. But the courage to go and register the company. Now he tells you what to do. And remember like Mary, whatsoever he saith to do, do it. You know the risk of filling six pots with water and then fetching it the power of god will turn the water to wine but there are principles you need to fill the pots put order put everything and then now go and start serving when christ is revealed in the midst of his people he is revealed as the power of god the power to break yokes the power to change conditions is that true but he's also revealed as the wisdom of God. I can tell you this. The problem is usually not with the power of God. The problem is that most people do not know how to access the wisdom of God and put it to use. Doth not wisdom cry. When wisdom cries towards your direction tonight, don't ignore it. Just in search for power. If the anointing comes to you as wisdom, it is still God visiting you. If the anointing comes to you as power, it is still God visiting you. You must open up your spirit. Don't choose the power of God and ignore the wisdom of God. And don't choose the wisdom of God and ignore the power of God. Christ revealed among them that are called. He comes as the power of God. And he comes as the wisdom of God. When you read the next chapter, it tells you about the hidden wisdom of God that was reserved for our glory. The hidden wisdom. Then it says the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. The scriptures before verse 24 tells us that God has decided to use foolish things. Foolish things there mean weak things. Because you see, when you are accessing the wisdom of God, it will come with instructions and principles that don't make sense. For instance, go around Jericho seven times and shout. It is the foolishness of the ways of God. For instance, there is he that scattereth and increaseth. It is the wisdom of God. This is the danger of over dependence on principles and philosophies of men because sometimes when god comes to you it will be a simple principle there are times here you tell you hear me tell you shout you know jesus it does not make sense you think on my own i would want to make intelligent people to just shout like that but that is what he gives there are times i can tell you be quiet instrumentalist you be quiet just do your thing it is the wisdom of god there is a relationship between the wisdom of god and the power of god it is christ that brings it for some of you you have been chasing the power alone and god is telling you you are doing well but in addition to that you must access the wisdom of god You need order and beauty and glory in your life. It is important for you to understand that the wisdom of God must be at work in you. By me, kings reign and princes rule. With me are riches, wealth, and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. God revealed this to me, and so I know that there are many people here you came here for miracle service to visit you do you know i found out that most people's problems out of every three people two is financial is their financial issues are we together either some kind of maybe financial constraint financial limitations and we, we don't shy away from these things any responsible ministry must be responsive to the realities of the times you can see what is happening around our nation and generally around the globe. It is a risk to not have the wisdom of God that provides for financial stability. And don't you let anyone tell you it is not necessary. There are people today who only God knows how many people found their way to this place. 
there are people probably you you've heard people testify here and they can tell you i gave everything i didn't have anything you can imagine that kind of risk imagine a father with his wife and three or four or five children completely clueless as to where the next meal will come from and yet that man gave his life to christ no as that anointing comes upon you tonight don't just expect it's not just about witches and wizards christ the wisdom of god coming to you when the wisdom of god comes to you it speaks it tells you what to do the bible says the labor of the foolish weary yet every one of them why because they do not know the road to the city just because you are confused does not mean the road has been closed the road is there but until you find out christ has come tonight ladies and gentlemen please hear me he has come as a supernatural bailout system it's up to you to open up your heart and say lord i believe let me wrap up by saying this again for emphasis wisdom can decorate huh. let me show you a scripture i shared in just this morning or was it yesterday and i can't remember i think it was this morning i just want to show you something very powerful esther chapter 6 i just thought to show you an example of what god is doing to someone and doing over someone's life may that be you on that night give it to us 6 verse 1 on that night what night the night listen listen this was the night Mordecai was visited the night to his downfall do you know that Haman had planned that by the next day they've built the gallows already her man was on his way to ask for permission that by the morrow by the morrow Mordecai will be gone and the Bible says that night I know that tomorrow is when your landlord is coming but this night leave tomorrow tomorrow is when they give you the last chance over whatever it is but this night the Bible says, on that night, his destiny helper could not sleep. And he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles. And they were read before the king too. And it was found written, may it be found written about you. Listen, I hope you know it was not the king that wrote this. The king is just hearing what was written. That means the person who would have written it if he forgot to write it. There will be no nothing like that that calls for reward he found where it was written it always starts with what is written that mordecai had told of bigthana and teresh two of the king's chamberlains these were wicked men who wanted to kill the king and mordecai revealed it and then they they you know they destroyed them and all of that the keepers of the door who sought to lay hand on king ahasuerus verse 3 and the king said what honor and dignity has been done to mordecai for this he was part of my success he was a system of rescue for me but what has happened to him i told you that honor is when you are perceived to match your true worth this was a man who was a deliverer but not rewarded to match that now the king is saying what honor had been done the king's servant that ministered to him said there is nothing done for him verse 4 and the king said who is in the court guess who was there a man god can use anything including her man when god is determined to bless you he can play the even enemies like a chest to put things together and now robe you with honor listen the part i want you to focus on is everything that was done to mordecai because in the name of jesus the lord will make it happen in your life yeah. give us that scripture let's hurry up now her man was come into the outward court of the king's house why to speak unto the king to hang mordecai 
on the gallows that he had prepared for him very wicked man he was so sure the king would give him permission that he had built the gallows in advance so that as soon as the permission is there nothing will stop do you know the king when you read the previous verses the king the, her man said every time they gave him honor he was happy but anytime he's passing and he sees mordecai at the gate you say this man is still here the king's servant said behold her man standed in the court and he said let him come in watch this now so her man came in and the king said unto him what shall be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor may that be me tonight in the name of jesus christ the king delighted to honor the king delighted to honor now her man thought in his heart look at this evil man to whom would the king delight to do honor more than to myself he's about to describe something that will happen to you tonight and her man answered the king for the man whom the king delighted to honor do the following number one let the royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear even though he desired this out of an evil heart but god showed us that he's not afraid and ashamed to let us carry that same robe a robe of royalty to wear number two the horse that the king rided upon go and study ancient history you will find out that the best of the trained horses were for the kings the horse when you ride on a horse and someone walks afoot the difference will be clear the horse that the king rided upon and a royal crown which set upon his head verse 9 and let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of the one who the king or of the king's most noble princes that they will array that man <laughs> look at this they said you should take him on horseback to the streets of the city everybody say influence the streets of the city and proclaim before him thus shall be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor verse 10 and the king said to her man make haste and take the apparel and the horse that thou hast said and do even so to joshua selman hmm. yes he came from a background that may not be anything to write home about i know he sits at the gate but still do him the honor but he, he does not qualify for it not by his background i have spoken do him that honor and he said let nothing fail of all that has been spoken does that look to you like genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 the bible says and the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did unto sarah as he has spoken now unto the lamb upon the throne we raise a sound we raise a sound over the nations of the earth hallelujah listen do you know when the wisdom of god comes upon your life the wisdom of god can turn you i've seen some of my pictures you know i don't like looking at them but i've seen some of my interesting pictures i remember how impressed i was with myself at the time i snapped that picture and i am surprised to see the contrast i believed i dressed well I believed that the tailor was fair on me I believed I was at my best I still remember how confident I felt snapping those pictures but now looking at those things today sometimes I wonder and I say my God that something can happen to you today it will take a telescope to look at your yesterday By 
making's reign a robe of honor upon you for someone you came for this miracle service tonight you are out of the grave but your hands and your feet are still bound with grave clothes I don't know how many of you would like to give such a person a hug there are madmen all around our cities and some of them dress in ways that you wonder how they dressed who dressed them that way and sometimes they come to you with joy even wanting to shake you why do you run away at least it's God's creature why are you running away from the person you don't run away from animals like that but here is somebody in the image of God that you're running away because there's something about his dressing if a madman wears suit and tie puts a nice perfume and is still mad you most likely will not run away because it does not look mad is that true so one of the ways you identify problems is by what you are wearing you can wear a garment that drives every good thing from your life please hear me it is possible that a garment is upon you that makes people forget you it is possible that a garment is upon you it says remove the grave clothes lose him and let him go i didn't bring him out to keep him at the door of the tomb i want him to go he is out by power but it will take wisdom to lose him and let him go is someone ready to pray jump up on your feet and cry unto the lord reveal your glory in my life as the power of god and as the wisdom of god please go ahead and pray some like lazarus would need to be called forth from one dimension to the other from failure to victory from defeat to success but there are others who are already out but you need the know-how to remove the grave clothes you need to know what to do go ahead and pray reveal yourself oh god in the name of jesus christ reveal yourself Are you praying as the wisdom of God they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course wisdom tells you what to do and it works closely with understanding that tells you how to do there is always something to do You are glorious, so glorious in your ways. You are glorious, so glorious in your ways. You are powerful, so powerful in your ways. You are powerful, so powerful in your ways. You are mighty, so mighty in your way. You are mighty, you're mighty in your way. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. You are glorious, so glorious in your way. Yahweh, Yahweh, you are glorious, so glorious in your way. You are glorious, so glorious in your way. You are mighty, you are mighty. I was very very humbled 
I always am broken when I hear of the sacrifices that people make for every service from as early as 8, 9, 10 there were people already here some of you have been here since morning inside, outside, everywhere enduring some of you have not even eaten just to encounter the God of heaven do you really believe that God will keep you that long just to share the grace and go back no hello him Adonai hello him Adonai hello him Adonai Hello, him, Adonai. Hello, him, Adonai. Hello, him, Adonai. Hello, him, Adonai. power of the most high revealed in the midst of his people the wisdom and the grace of this God hallelujah hallelujah we're going to start tonight with the sick i really want to minister to the sick listen let me tell you this the healing ministry is a very cardinal cardinal validator of the gospel the healing ministry remove the healing ministry from the gospel um, you have reduced its potency by a very serious degree you read the Bible everywhere the communication of the truth of the gospel everywhere you find the message of the gospel or the communication of the doctrine you find the healing ministry everywhere Jesus is revealed you find the healing ministry please look up let me tell you something about the healing ministry why does God heal for many reasons one of them being that there is no human being who has been given the privilege of entering two bodies in a lifetime as benevolent as God is he can replace parts in the body but we do not have any record of anyone who, le who left one whose spirit was extracted out of one body completely organs have been transplanted within the same organism everyone is given one body per lifetime one body per lifetime satan knowing this you don't receive forgiveness only once you don't receive mercy only once but this body the moment you are born that body remains with you and if anything happens to that body you have lost your chance of continuity as far as the earth is concerned are we together there is no record in scripture and there is no record as we know in history science has not come close to extracting a human spirit out of a body and transferring it into another body the only person who wanted to do that was satan himself when he was looking for the body of moses when moses died he wanted his body so that a demon could enter that body and he will create a a false moses and michael stopped him and said the lord that means this is not is not permitted the lord rebuke you listen to me bodies matter ask satan what he was looking for in a dead body the body of moses moses had died 
and satan said i am still interested in the body so everything that afflicts you is ministering death in a measure to you satan's ultimate goal in sickness and affliction is to break help help those under the anointing to deteriorate your body now listen i have taught you here that there is a threshold health condition for your spirit to live in your body when your body is broken and deteriorated beyond that level the spirit will no longer be able to stay and the spirit will have to live in a process called death even in resurrection the spirit still enters the same body the only time bodies will change is when the king himself makes that decree and this body will be changed from one that is corrupted to one incorruptible this is what the bible teaches us but that until then you have a responsibility to protect your body we protect our bank accounts more than our bodies we protect our cars a vehicle that can have an accident and you can save and buy another one but the one body most of us are using more than one cars multiple cars and you keep changing them even if nothing is wrong you are just tired of that body of a car you change another one but when this body goes bad so satan knows this everywhere god will take you is this body that will take your spirit so when jesus heals he's making a very serious statement how does he heal by correcting faulty conditions medical doctors will tell us that a man is as healthy as his organs his tissues and satan would start afflicting those things one by one we have all kinds of systems biology and medicine teaches us and most of us here it's possible that you have one medical report or the other that is threatening you an organ in your body some kind of condition i want you to believe to heal means to introduce the power of god like a drug listen you know medicine really teaches us how healing works when you pick a drug say you have headache and you pick paracetamol or anything you don't have to tell the drug where to go to your job is to swallow it is that true when you swallow it whatever happens at that point is none of your business again the drugs goes to your body and you know that the drug is working by looking out for changes in your body there are some of you when you swallow some drugs you start sweating you feel sleepy there are certain drugs they say eat before taking it there you know they give all kinds of conditions but when that drug enters your body it begins to work the pharmacology of that drug has already been predetermined by those who those who have designed it yours is to swallow it and watch the wonder a tiny piece of whatever it is and you swallow and it begins to do all kinds of things and sometimes medicine has advanced now to encourage us when they want to market certain products they animate the way the drugs destroy those germs have you seen those kinds of things if they want to market soap they show children with jams on their faces and then they show the mother bathing the child and you watch what that soap the 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 you know the, what they call them now the active ingredients what it does to those jams that's the same way the anointing works when the anointing enters your body you don't have to say go to my head or go to my hand you're placing your hand there just as a point of contact for your own faith not to encourage the anointing the anointing knows what to do the anointing starts searching for what does not look like the garden of eden it goes to your head everything is fine it goes to your heart and finds out that the devil is trying to put a hole in your heart let me tell you what it does the same power that raised lazarus the same power that raised christ from the dead is administered to that body and listen there are times that certain bodily parts have been so deteriorated you will need a new one and a new one can come lazarus had died for three days we're all intelligent people if you die for three days there's something called embalmment is that true 
and let me tell you the way they used to embalm people those days even if you are pretending you must die if they embalm you that way you, you saw how they tied the man if you are acting and, and playing games and they are done embalming you you must die they cover everywhere from head to toe so they, they, they cannot you can't doubt that lazarus died and yet you think that some of the organs had not packed up and failed blood was not flowing in that body and yet when the master said lazarus Kala parusiata. the same way in the name of jesus we are going to be making decrees now hear me when the word of the lord comes for your healing you have two responsibilities number one to believe in jesus and to believe in the vessel that he's using number two to take a step of faith what is a step of faith actions of obedience the bible says as they went not when they wanted to go go and show yourself to the priest that was suicidal if they ever appeared before the priest leprous they would be banished forever as they went that means when the power of god comes if you couldn't walk you have to take a step of faith remember acts chapter 3 silver and gold i do not have but such as i have give i unto you in the name of jesus rise up and walk the bible says the man sat down and was watching and he held his hand and lifted him and he leaping stood if you lay your hands and they pray and you're just watching you most likely may not receive anything you receive by faith and you begin to check yourself it's a condition that you need to run to the medical stand to ask them to check you oh I, I came with HIV and the word has come I need to go there to check my blood pressure for instance is whatever over, over whatever the most important thing is that report is not good I need this change and once they pray you don't sit down and say I believe please check this for me you see let me tell you medicine and the supernatural were not designed to be enemies medicine confirms the supernatural that's why you don't fight doctors those who fight doctors to show that they are powerful are in ignorance doctors are symbols of god's mercy medicine if you are truly healed science will confirm it if you are healed of hiv or cancer or whatever it is um it is the medical confirmation that validates to us that the power of god has really come but to believe that the power of God cannot correct bodily conditions is to insult the resurrection power I'm ready to pray for the sick now we had such profound phenomenal miracles in Joss um, yesterday particularly during the miracle service it was such a humbling move of the Spirit of God you can do well to watch the video for your own personal edification I believe that it should be on our koinonia global page or so just watch it and learn it's not just to show that a man of god is powerful especially for those of you who are in ministry there's something about watching to see the power of god on display these are not some gimmicks that you're playing games no it's one thing to be healed at home and come and testify but it's another thing to testify real time are we together you can go to a shop for instance to buy popcorn the one they've made two days old three days old but there are people who will leave that one and they want the one that is popping there is an experience people love freshness this is why it's good that you receive testimonies and come and testify but there's something about the power of god on display real time it proves to people here and now that jesus is still alive are you ready now in one minute i'd like you to declare that any sickness within your body that is not of god any planting it must live right now and if you are standing for someone i know there are people watching in hospitals there are people watching by sick beds i want you to believe take your eyes away from the infirmity and pray Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thee. 
as you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.